All right. So the second half of the show, we're going to talk and give a little bit of updates about the police audit. A lot of people have been asking questions about that and, uh, you know, some of the public comments at the last select board meeting. Uh, I want to just do some updates on that uh, because it's important and it's important to know. And there were some announcements today that I want to pull up here in a second by Rita Lombardi. Um, so we'll get into a little bit of that. Uh, let's see. And real quick, I just want to go through these. Uh, Maureen, thank you so much for the 499 super sticker. DeAndre says, if Higgins purges himself and uses federal equipment illegally, do we think he will lose his job and pension? Well, he's on desk duty right now. He's definitely on desk duty right now. And pro I mean, just basically what we were talking about before, he essentially admitted to a federal crime. Uh, what will happen with all of that remains to be seen. We know that all of these witnesses uh, so far have been protected in this case. But I think Alan Jackson getting that out on the record, listing the uh, potential uh, uh, laws that were broken in code uh, in front of the jury and letting them know is very, very important. So uh, that's my opinion on that. And he should, in my opinion, I think he should face federal charges for the things that he did and for the resources that he illegally used because he's not active in this investigation. He's not an active investigator in this investigation. He used it out of personal use. Um, we'll go on here. Let's see. Uh, Ms. Park, thank you so much. She says, what does the panel think of Office General Keith's uh, family reaction? Um, you know, it, it's sad. It's sad that they have to go through this. You know, that would be my opinion on that. I've said that on all of my live streams watching the court testimony. It's very sad that they have to go through this. Um, Steven says, who let Chloe, uh, Chloe out? to go potty and feed her that morning. I think Brian Higgins, didn't Brian Higgins said that he took, um, I'm not Higgins, I'm sorry, Brian Albert Sr. Didn't he say that he took uh, Chloe out that night in recent testimony? Uh, Owit says gas station and PX not on the base. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this. We'll get some updates on the, um, uh, the audit. It's very important. So Rita Lombardi today put out a post, and this was in the Facebook group, if you're in the justice group. It says, urgent request, Chief Rafferty contract expires on June 30th, 2024. The select board has until tomorrow, Friday, May 31st, to provide the chief uh, with the required 30-day notice of non-renewal. The select board needs to hear from you on this very important leadership decision for Canton. While it impacts Canton residents directly, you do not need to be from Canton to share your perspective on this very important matter. Uh, you can help us now by sending an email to bostonattown.canton.ma.us. Thank you for advance and for your continued support. So please write them, put in a request, put in a request um, and help this. We cannot let Chief Rafferty back in. Okay, let's, um, I'm just going to drop this. I don't need my name up there, but let's do this. Let's pull up some of the select board. And this was back on the 29th. And before actually I play that, I'll play actually the results of what happened. There was a new, this here. Let's play this here. And then we'll play a little bit of that meeting. And new at 11, NBC 10's Eli Rosenberg is, so this is back in April. I'm in Canton, where a public meeting on the town's audit of the police department just wrapped up. And Eli, we've seen it on social media and really outside the courthouse. There has been a lot of accusations of police corruption. What was said tonight? Well, Priscilla, not as much what was said as what was screamed. Things getting really heated during this meeting here tonight. You didn't even hear it was supposed to be a routine meeting, the first step in launching an audit of the Canton Police Department. It quickly, though, spiraled out of control. You know, we Poor just Rita. want to heal. And this is what this has done to our community. Our community is torn apart. All opposed. Last November, the town voted in a special election to launch an independent audit of the Canton Police Department. 
That vote coming after critiques of how the police department handled the January 2022 investigation into the death of Boston police officer John O'Keefe. I know people that lost friends over this, you know, and we just want, we want to know what's going on in town. And I had to fly down there in the car. Retired high school teacher Mary McManus started watching Monday night's meeting at home, but raced over to join in person, pushing for answers. People are afraid to open their mouths and say something. People People are afraid that they're going to lose friends. And while Monday night's meeting got heated several times. Those in the crowd say they just want a path to returning Canton to a city united, not divided. And we just want to get our community oh, back. Poor Rita. We want people to go every and we want to be the best that we can be. So it gives you a sense of some of the emotion inside this meeting, which lasted a little over an hour. This is the first of three meetings to determine what's called a scope of services, something that's going to guide the town as they pick a firm to do this audit. The next meeting is set for May 16th, and they hope to have something in place by this summer. All right, let's play some of that April meeting. Then we're going to play a little bit of the May meeting, the 16th meeting. We'll play the public comments from that. And then there was just a recent select board meeting on the 28th, and I'll play the uh, public comments on that too. But let's see what led up to those tempers flaring inside that April meeting. Uh, let me pull that up here. So this is back on April 29th. We'll play probably about the first 20 minutes of this and then go to the public comments. And I'll boost the sound. Hi, everybody. I'm Kathleen Howley. I've lived in Ooh. Canton uh, since 2006, so I'm new here. Um, and uh, it's an honor to serve uh, on the independent uh, police audit procurement. Now, this is the first committee meeting about the police audit. The committee. Um, I do have a question because uh, I was going to ask it as a point of order, but I'll ask it now. When, the, when Article 6 was passed by uh, 903 voters, I'll just note that's <clears throat> the amount that pa usually passes our entire annual budget. Um, there was no mention of a chairman in the motion, but the January 22nd uh, letter from Randy Scarlins appointed uh, Ms. McCarthy as chairman. So I do think that that was exceeding the powers uh, that were given under this uh, article that passed a special town meeting. I do think it would be nice, uh, a, a, a show of independence for the committee because we want to reassure taxpayers that our $7 million a year plus, if you don't count capital expenditures, are well spent. We are fund the police people. We want to fund the police. Um, we are paying the taxes that fund the police and we're happy to do that. We just want reassurance that our money is being well spent and the way to get that is with a truly independent committee. Uh, that so the audio is going to be a little low as far as the meeting because they're using just probably an ambient mic in the room. So I try to boost it as best as I can. But you will you will hear what happened, what actually caused the the, the kind of the breakout fight in that meeting. Uh, and then some of the other ones are a little bit better. When we get to the public comments, they actually use a microphone so you can hear it. So I'm trying to boost it as best I can, but we'll we'll roll on is perceived as independent, that there's no, because there's two problems, the conflict of interest and an appearance of a conflict of interest, both, both are problems. So I think it would be a nice move if the committee chose its own chairman and had nominations other than Bob, and Bob, you're a wonderful person, but you know, it was not given in the article that passed the special town meeting. Uh, the uh, Randy Scollins just appointed Bob, which does not seem quite according to Robert's rules. Thank you. Hi, my name is David Clough. I'm been, I've been living in Canton since 2015. I'm a member of the Finance Committee as well as I've served on the Capital Planning Committee in the past. Um, just honored and privileged to be a part of this committee and in hopes that you know the town can heal and move forward in the right direction. And thank you very much. Hello, I'm Dan Muse, an emergency physician working at Brockton Hospital, who's been living in Canton since the fall of 1995. Um, I have been involved as a volunteer in 
the multiple areas, not much legislative in the town of Canton. Um, also, some issues have come up and I thought that I would just make a statement to clarify some of the things that recently have been stated uh, on social media, which by the way, has to be sent to me because I do not have a social media platform. So several statements have been made about my relationship with the Canton Police Department, Municipal Police Training Set Committee, and the Norfolk County DA's office. Since that 2013, I've been involved with the medical training of police in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, began with naloxone training, which is an antidote for opioid overdoses, an epidemic that is now taking over 100,000 lives every year in this country. All right, I'm going to speed up the introductions here. Let's see. Uh, but in any event, uh, I look forward to the process. I please sit down. Yeah, let's go back. So probably $165 million on projects throughout the town. Every one of those projects come in on time and on budget. That's a pretty damn good track record. And hopefully we'll be able to do something with this as well. That'll give you the introduction to all of us here tonight. And I would say we'd go to the first point of our uh, agenda. No, I'm sorry. The meeting tonight is basically... No, no. Please, please sit down. No, at the at the time at the at the. I believe that's Rita speaking. End of the meeting, at the end of the meeting, at public comment, you can. Up until that point, we're under Robert's rules of order, and please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. That's Rita. Thank you. All right, I'm looking for nominations for chairman of the police audit committee. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Dave Plough for uh, chairman. Second. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Bob McCarthy, and I will second that. Can, can I have a point of order? There's a motion that's been seconded and is on the table. No, both of them, though. That's, that's not that's, Robert's rules. That's Robert's rules. You can have two, and we vote accordingly. We have to take them one, one at a time. No, no, we can take them both at the same time and vote on one. Yeah, well, so, uh, I'm I, I've been doing Robert's Rules of Order for 30 plus years, and I think I know it better than somebody who's never sat on a committee. Now, we have a motion before us. The motion is, and we'll go, because it's my priority, we'll vote on Mr. McCarthy first. Uh, roll call, please. Kathleen? I, I object because it's not Robert's Rules, but I vote for, I vote yes for no. today. Um, I would like to ask if a couple of the members would like to recuse themselves since they're associated with the police. The underlying article has mentioned that there should be no affiliation with the police in the article, <coughs> not to discredit any of your personal accomplishments, but there should be no police on the committee as written in Article 6 of the special town meeting warrant. I disagree with that, and quite frankly, we're moving on. So how are you voting on this? How are you voting? What's the uh, what's the up vote? or down? Yes or no? You didn't. Can I please hear the vote again? What here? What's the question? To elect Mr. McCarthy as chairman of this committee. No, I, Kathleen objection. voted no. No objection. I I I nominated before anybody else. That was the motion that's been that's seconded. That's how it works. That's on the floor. No, it isn't. You're out of order. To nominate Bob. You could have two on. You're the out of order. No, I'm not. You're out of order. Yes or no? Do you? No. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And yes. Rita just asked, is this Russia? You know, this is this is in extremely important that this audit gets done and complete with complete transparency by an independent agency. A Boston police officer was killed in Canton and left to die on 34 Fairview. This is extremely important to make sure that the processes and the policies and the the people that are hired into these positions are on the up and up. And clearly it's not. Clearly it's not. Look what happened in Canton. 
John O'Keefe, Boston police officer, was killed outside a police officer's house in a neighborhood of police officers. And if you've watched this trial for the last, what, we're four weeks, almost five weeks in this trial, show me one shred of evidence, please. And I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting for the Commonwealth to put forth one shred of evidence that Karen Reed committed second degree murder. I, I haven't seen it and I'm still waiting. And this is what's going on in Canton. And not only is it going on in Canton, this is going on in your town, your city as well. These are people that have been on these committees for years and years and years because of who they are. And they get a pass all the time. And shit like this happens in your town, in your city. And thank God that there are people in their right mind, citizens that live in Canton, that are standing up and pushing back. And you need to do more of this in your, in your community. And I say this all the time about elections. You know, everybody stresses about the presidential election. The presidential, uh, presidential election is not going to have that profound effect like the, like the people that run your communities. You need to look into these people because corruption like this may be happening under your nose, and I'm sure, th I'm sure it is. And the reason that it continues is because you don't stand up and say anything, or you don't look into the people that want to get voted into these positions. And then they just sit for years and years and years, and the same old thing happens, and the same old thing happens. And that's why I laugh. Even when we get into a national election, Oh, I got to vote blue because I live in a blue state. Oh, I got to vote red because I live in a red state. No, vote to make a change. Don't look at the color or the DRR that they represent. If it's someone that aligns with your ide ideology, don't be afraid to vote for that person. You can vote for whoever you want, but don't play this game of the politics system, like, oh, well, I live in a Republican state, so I got to vote Republican. Oh, I live in a Democrat state, so I got to vote Democrat. If you're, if the, the state that you lived in, the community you've lived in hasn't changed, maybe you want to try that guy or woman on this, you know, over here. Let's stop going with the person that's been there for 10, 20 years. Anyway, I digress. Let's play a little bit more of this, and then I'll fast forward to the public comments. Yes, you gentlemen. Have, have has three, everyone taken conflict of interest two, training and been Mr. sworn McCarthy in? Mr. McCarthy is the chairman. Has everyone taken conflict of interest training and been sworn in by the town clerk? Yes. 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 You guys, have Everybody you guys filled out been. your um, your ethics training? Uh, <laughs> we were told we had 30 days to complete it when we were sworn in the other day. We're going to be voting. We're going to be voting on, we're going to be handling $200,000 of taxpayers' money. I think that before anybody does that, they should have this certificate. But also here, I have a form that, um, you know, Mr. Reed, it's not about being, well, all, you're a great guy. You don't know me. Well, I hear you're a great guy. But it has, know. conflicts of interest have nothing to do with it being a great guy or not. I have here a disclosure form that you could fill out mm. that would help the situation if no. you wanted no, to let, follow let me, me. Let me overrule you please for a minute here, please. please stay stay along the These road. people were elected by town meeting. 903 votes voted for the three of us. No, no. no. Oh, yeah. no, oh, no, oh, yes, no. they did. No. Oh, time out, oh, Mr. Oh, McCarthy. Yes, they did. You, you don't have an election you for us. The, high, you appointed the highest legislative in the body in the town of Canton That's is not town meeting. Oh, yeah, it, is. it definitely is. And I've checked with town council. And so I know I'm correct. The meeting. Town council yourself. You, it did not make you chairman, you, you two have been nominated to the election that was run at the instigation and the overview of town council. You where came in at 58 in votes, you, you came were... in at 57 votes. May I ask you, you where does it say election? in the article that you're chairman to even run this election and to be sitting in that seat? Where does it say? Unreal. Duke, thank you so much. Four ninety nine, dollars and we'll add that to the total. We're at $450 total. 25% will get kicked back to Karen Reed. And the way that I do it for complete transparency is I post receipts up on my Facebook page, LTL Media. I'll post to the YouTube community page the receipt. And then you can ultimately go and vet me and just go right to the defense fund link and you will see LTL chat razor 
and then today's date, which is 53024. So right now the percentage of 25% kickback would be, and let me use my calculator because I'm terrible at math. Math. We're at uh let's see 112. I'll round it to 115 as of right now. Kick back to Karen Reed's defense fund. All right, let's play a little bit more of this and then I will go to the public comments. It doesn't. Who else was going to put it together? You know, you put Mr. it together. Mr. Randy right. Scarlin put it together and said, you'll be the chairman until we get to the meeting, at which point a permanent chairman will be elected. We just did that. You Mr. Uh, you're out of order. You're out of order. If you keep it up, I'll ask you to clear the room. And don't think I won't. All right, moving on to the next part of the agenda. See, they don't want the audit because they know it's going to peel back and show all of the corruption that's gone on for years. They don't want the audit. And it's clearly showing as we're watching this trial unfold, the Commonwealth has nothing on Karen Reed because Karen Reed didn't do this. What they do have is a bunch of garbage that they used to frame her. We've seen uh, lying witnesses. We've seen a botched investigation. We're possibly going to see the lead uh, investigator that is involved majorly in this in this corrupt cover uh, cover up, taking false statements, altering false uh, altering statements, finding supposedly key evidence days. You know, from this uh, from this uh, investigation, this case, you're seeing it. This is pushback. They don't want their ivory tower knocked down. They've sat on it for a very long time and done many, many corrupt things to get where they are. And now you have the result of that. A Boston police officer was killed was killed inside 34 Fairview. And that's why they don't want this audit. Scope of services. Lisa, thank you for becoming a new member. So what about vice chair? Let's add $5. I nominate Dave Clough for Five. vice chair of the committee. All right. Do we, is there a second? You have to ask. Second. Me. We'll take it one at a time. All those in favor? Aye. By roll call. Excuse me. Aye. Aye. You have to abstain. Aye. You have to abstain. Aye. Yes or no? Aye. This is corrupt. Aye. You are the vice chair. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Vote no. So what is it? Three, two? No, I, I'm fine with it. You still have to record the vote. Yeah. Okay. And can you can you let us know how you vote? Let us, I said no. Okay. Thank you. I didn't hear it. Four, one. The motion Four, carries. One. Yep. All right. The... Uh, Scope of services. I did send out to everybody over the weekend. I'm going to go to public comments. Let's go to public comments. Let's hear Rita. Go back so I can get to public comments. All right, here we go. What does the uh, committee want? Anything within reason. I don't. I'm. Or how about we Stop motion to five. expand? Mike, the thank you for the 50 minutes. minutes as, opposed, uh, as opposed to uh, a motion 20 to... minutes maximum. 25? Can we meet no, in the middle? No, 20. Could the people who want to comment please stand up so we have an idea of how many? Is there anyone else? Four. Four people. Should, we Stick should be fine. Yeah. Go ahead. You have the floor. I like the combined scope. It seems to touch just about everything, close to everything that the petitioners were concerned about. What I didn't hear was the time frame for historical analysis. And I say that because citizens' concerns date back to 2018 or <coughs> earlier. And for certain things like um, crime scene response and conflicts of interest, there are concerns about multiple cases and incidents in town that do date well before Karen Reed. And that's all. 
Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Murphy. <laughs> Greg Murphy, uh, Ken resident. Um, so I, I guess the first thing I'm, I'm confused about, uh, the, my understanding of at least the way the select board is run, when a topic of conversation is brought up, in this case, the what will be in the scope of the audit, that the citizens have a chance to chime in, in in the, on that topic and not have to wait specifically for public comment. If I misunderstood what Robert's rules are there, then um, I'll, I'm using my public comment to do that now. Um, with respect to the scope, I, I'll agree with Liza that the, I think the, the combining of, of the scopes is a great idea. But I didn't hear in either one of them, I think you covered um, communication, hierarchy, training, all, all, all touched around the area. But I, I would love if you could in, also include um, reviewing of the hiring practices. Mm. Nice yeah, that. My important. My understanding is our, our processes that we follow limit our scope of possible uh, candidates. And that's not how it has to be. That's at least by the way we, we choose to do it, that's how it has to be. But I believe there's other options that um, we could choose that don't limit the pool of, of potential candidates for us. I don't know if it would be better or worse, but my uh, suggestion is to include that review and ask the professionals, the independent review, you know, auditors to um, take a look at that and see if there might be a better process for the town. Thank you. Ms. Rita. Rita Lombardi, Canton resident. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize for my uh, outburst at the beginning of the meeting. This is very emotional and very, it, it, I'm impassioned about this. And the reason we're here is because there's lack of trust and we're trying to heal the community. So I just want to say that I'd like to start over and I like how you present it. That isn't what we have seen, Bob, Mr. McCarthy. So, you know, from my standpoint and from the petitioner's standpoint, you know, we heard strong opposition from you at the, spe at the special town meeting. We also had strong opposition from people in the town. It was a heated topic to get this approved. And then we had Mr. Scollins uh, appoint you as chairperson mm -hmm. outside of the normal process. Right. And things just, and then we had, we didn't- That's not transparency. That's not transparency to go outside uh, of the regulations and then just nominate people. We really have a choice. We <clears throat> had to go with the chairperson and two other people. Mm -hmm. So we're lopsided. Yeah. We have a three to two vote. And so that didn't make us feel good. And it felt a little like bullying. And so that's where I was coming from earlier. And so I just want to start over. And I just want to say, you two gentlemen, I don't know you. I do know someone who does know you, very dear to me. And he did say you were a great person, Dr. Muse. And so, um, and that's where Kathleen was coming from. So I don't know you, but when we find out that, you know, you bought property from uh, Helena, the chief of police's parents, and you bought their house, it makes us feel yeah, like a weird lack of trust. Yeah. And it's not you, but that's why we're here. And so all we're looking for is collaboration. We want to work. We want to heal the community. I come from the private sector. And in the private sector, audits are done all the time. They're done to make things better. We're not looking to say, who did something wrong? Let's go get them. That's not what this is about. Mm -hmm. This is about protecting us from lawsuits. We're going to get sued in the Karen Reed case. Yep. We're going to get sued. The state of Massachusetts is going to get yep. sued. We want to protect the town from that. And in, in the private sector, when there's policies and procedures and there's automation to safeguard people going rogue, we, know, we need those same controls in the public sector. That's what we're looking for. Things shouldn't happen. We shouldn't have the breaks and procedures that we have had. We're looking to fix those. So I just want to say, if we could just collaborate and work together and start over and mend, I mean, I love that we're blending what you have and what you have together. That's what we want. We want to bring the community back together. Our families are torn apart. Everyone's families are torn apart. Mine's no different than everybody else. It's excruciating. You just don't see it on my face. You know, everyone's family is impacted by this. And the sooner we can show everybody that we're working together for a united goal for the betterment of our, of our town, the better we're all going to be. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate really and truly what I just heard. And I hope that we can go forward. And I really appreciate 
you're giving us extra time to talk because that's another thing that we feel stifled in the select board meetings. And all we want to do is express ourselves. And when we're, we're stuffed, then it blows up. So anyways, that's all I got for tonight. <laughs> I really appreciate it. And um, I, I really hope that we can um, get the best audit firm that we can so that we can fix whatever yeah, we need honest. to fix so that we can be the best town that we can be and be proud of everything that we're doing. So thank you. So, you know, you got to commend Rita and you got to commend these people that get up and stand up in front of this board and, and speak their mind. A lot of people in communities don't say anything. You know, this could be any, any town, any town USA and a police officer is killed outside another police officer's, an ex-police officer's house in a neighborhood of police officers, and people are very afraid to say things. Believe me, there are a lot of people in Canton that are very afraid to speak up about this. We hear it on an, an everyday basis. I'm in and around that area a lot, and people come up to me and they say, you know, hey, you know, I, I completely stand behind what you're doing. Karen Reed didn't do this, but I'm just afraid to say anything. You know, that's how it's gotten there. That's what, what it's what it's like. And that's what it's like living around here. The other night I was out at a restaurant with my girlfriend and we're leaving and I had my, my Karen Rita's frame shirt on. And this was probably like two weeks into the trial. These older ladies grabbed me on the way out of the restaurant and she said, can I ask you about your shirt? And I said, absolutely. We started having this conversation about Karen Reed. And she goes, we live in the area and we've been watching the case. She says, we've lost so many friends because of the way that we feel that Karen Reed didn't do this. But we're so afraid to speak up and talk about it because we lose so many people. I, I talked about this before. I had a, a, a good acquaintance of mine that I've known for many, many years, an EMS worker. And he essentially, when the trial started calling me crazy, just relentlessly messaged me, messaged me. And I hope that this person is watching. I have no ill feelings. I have no bad feelings. You're a good person. But I can't sit there every day and you're messaging me, you know, every hour and saying, oh, you know, the evidence is adding up against her and this is the way it's going to be and bombs are going to drop. And, you know, and essentially when you said that the bombs were going to drop, uh, you said within like a one or three day period. Yeah, it did. Because then we had Brian Higgins on the stand and then we found out he broke a lot of federal laws and probably going to be prosecuted for that. There should be criminal charges, in my opinion, against Brian Higgins. But you know, I essentially had to detach myself from this person. And I get it. You know, there are people that are in the line of these duties, EMS workers, police officers that feel very emotionally attached to this, that, you know, someone in my line of work cannot, you know, cannot do any wrong. Well, there are people in all lines of work that we do that do wrong things. I just had this discussion at the UPS store today with one of the girls that worked there. I said, look, you know, I think people get the perception that the free Karen Reed crowd hates cops. If anything, we're some of the most pro-police people. I, I'm only speaking for myself. If I'm in any type of trouble, I'm gonna call 911. But I wanna make sure that when that officer, or that EMS worker arrives, that they are proficient in their activities and their duties and they're honest. You know, I, I'm happy that we get the uh, capability now to have body-worn cameras. You know, it's it clears a lot of things up puts the evidence on the record if anything ever happens. But I want people to understand, just because you hold a, a very personal position, people that save people's lives, and believe me, I wouldn't want to be a police officer, an EMS worker in today's society. It's a tough job. But there are bad people in those, in those professions, just like there's bad realtors or there's bad bankers or there's bad people that work for the UPS or FedEx or whatever it may be, whatever industry you're in, there are bad people. But in this situation, a police officer lost his life. That cannot happen. That cannot happen. And we cannot have people in position to twist the evidence and twist the facts to put someone else's life in danger that did not do this. People don't realize. Karen Reed potentially could go to jail for the rest of her life. And that's not fair because she didn't do this. And you're going to let a couple of people 
that co cooperated in all of this to ruin the rest of her life can't happen. All right, let's go to the next meeting. I just wanted to hear um, Rita. And I'm going to just read this. De uh, Deanna Miller, $25, says, just hopped on. I don't know if you talked about Dr. Rice yet, but wow, just wow. I'm an ER trauma nurse, and he does not represent uh, an ER doctor. Should be. Some of the explanations were wrong, unintelligible, and in my opinion, appeared to be inebriated. Thank you so much for the 25 uh, we did talk a little bit earlier that about that when uh, Melanie and Jess were on. Uh, so you can go back and check out that first half of the show. All right, let's go to the 16th. So we'll hear a little bit of the public comments on the 16th. Let's play those out here. Greg Murphy, uh, Wildwood Drive. There we go. Um, Notes throughout the meeting, so I'm going to be referencing my, my notes. We did. Um, so in the earlier discussions, you know, we mentioned very, very low. Is, Am I not having any microphone money? on? Yeah, right. I just want to make, yeah, there right, you I'm, I'm just re reorganizing. I'm even saying, what is going on here? <laughs> so, so oh, well, thank mentioning you. the town's financial constraints early on, um, caused me to have two thoughts. Um, we, we want to. Real quick, just get to this 1999er. Tammy Truth and Justice, thank you so much. I respect the police. I come from a family of cops. We need to stop the corruption in police departments, towns, etc. It has to stop. Uh, this is justice for all movement. I mean, listen, I had eight of my great uncles that went into World War II and fought and made it and had the opportunity to come back and do their, their duty. And, and some of them became firefighters. I mean, I respect law enforcement. I respect first responders, I respect uh, EMS workers. I respect every single officer that ran into the Twin Towers to help people that were in danger. It's a very sad day uh, in, in our history. You know, there are good people out there that are in that, that, that line of professional work that do good things. You know, and I it was just saying before, bad things, bad people get into good jobs. It does happen. It does happen. So thank you for the 1999er. I appreciate it. Tooth says, thank you for being so passionate and an ambassador for truth and justice. You give me hope for humanity. Well, thank you. Thank you for those kind words. I just try to do my part in all of this. You know, there are very many, there are many, many creators out there. There are many uh, journalists that are covering this. And this is uh, you know, my take on things, my perspective, and just try to do the best I can to keep the movement going, the free Karen Reed movement going. Um, all right. So let's play a little bit more of this here. Do we want to set, set that to, to give an out to complying with the audit? That, that, that was my concern with that, that, that whole concept. And I, I guess I'm wondering what other financial constraints do the the auditors need to know beyond the $200,000 that we have to spend for this audit or whatever we ultimately agree to. That's, my, that's the first thought. Um, second thought, there was a lot of discussion in reviewing policies and procedures when many folks who are against the audit have correctly pointed out that the policies and procedures, the written policies. Uh, Microdots checking in. If you haven't checked out Microdots, you need to check out Microdots on Twitter and on uh uh, YouTube, <laughs> amazing content, content beyond whatever I could ever think of in my entire life. I love you as a creator. Uh, I love your channel and I love all the contributions you have made to the free Karen Reed movement. You have been a huge part of this movement. You're kind of like the silent, silent, but you, uh, you put together some amazing stuff. So please go over and check out Microdots. Microdots says, great show, Brian. This is quality content. Thank you. Uh, and, and my content is not even on the level of the things that you put out. So, uh, hats off to you. Thank you so much. And believe it or not, my Microdots t-shirt is right there. I, I wear it probably at least once a week. So <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to Microdots, Microdots, if you want to, you can drop your, um, uh, YouTube channel, uh, in the chat because people need to be educated 
and hear uh, and watch some of your videos. All right, let's play on here. The procedures are not an issue. They're, they're, they're well written, they're well audited. The issue and what's been harped on, I'll say, because I'm one of them harping on it, um, from the people that have wanted this audit is the compliance. We got past that, but it took a while. But I, I just want that focus to be there, that, that, that it is about compliance. It's not about the written procedures. It's about how well they're following them all. Um, so that's my second thought. And related to this, um, when you instruct them to assess the hearings throughout, throughout the RFP, um, I would strongly uh, recommend that you consider adding the words and making recommendations for improvement as needed on every one of them. Third thought, there was a lot of debate on what to specify in the RFP. And I will say from personal audit and RFP experience, while you certainly want to define specifics, some specifics in the RFP, I'd advise you to consider opportunity to be more general about the requirements because these generalities will help you separate the wheat from the chaff in terms of the bidder's proposals. Um, if you are too specific in terms of requirements, you'll get the same proposal from each bidder. <clears throat> what you want is to consider different proposals so you can better evaluate how well each bidder's proposal will meet the town's needs and better position you to make the best choice for the town. Finally, as a general observation, it seems to me um, in your interest to manage the cost of this effort, if you veer too far from the desires of those who voted for this audit, you'll risk costing the town even more money when these same people sign another petition to force another special town meeting to vote for a proper audit while applying the lessons we've learned from this first round to ensure it's conducted the way we want. Thank you. I think that's just one quick comment. I think that's a, one of the biggest risks to you know what we're doing here is making sure we're trying to we don't have to re go through that special town meeting process again. We should we should just get it all done to be done with it the first time the right way. Rita Lombardi Canton and I just want to say, you know, we're here because there's a lack of trust. And we're here, you know. We have two people that were proponents of the audit. And, you know, so we're a little lopsided, which doesn't make us feel, you know, good about the trust. And what would help us is to be able to collaborate. And so when we got past that first point, I recognize, we all recognize there's five people up there, but I bet you none of you have experience with the police audit. And I don't think any of us here do either, but we do have expertise that we can bring to the party and help. And I know at the beginning, Dave said, recommended the finance committee where they discuss something and let the audience or the com community speak and contribute. And I would really like you to reconsider that because that's how we're gonna collaborate. That's how we're gonna work together to get through this. And what we really have sitting here, listening to this whole thing and listening to the trial the last three weeks, you know, we have a lack of leadership in this town, a problem with the leadership. That's why we are where we are. And we have a chief whose contract is up for renewal at the end of June. And this, the people in charge and the citizens need to really look at whether we want that contract renewed or not. We've had senior people from the fire department and the police department testify that they did things either by winging it or by doing whatever. And that's not how businesses work. Mm -hmm. We need to run like a business. We need to treat this like a business. And when we have policies and procedures, people need to adhere to them. It's, it shouldn't be selective. Today I'm going to, but tomorrow I'm not. It shouldn't be that way. Yeah. We need to be She's compliant right. with the policies and procedures that we have so that we are protected. We're worried about $200,000 on an audit. We're going to get sued. The whole state of Massachusetts is going to get sued over this mm -hmm. Karen Reed trial. And we are it's funny. Reed is basically saying things she said at the last meeting. God bless her. I love her. Trying to protect ourselves right. from gonna future sued. liability. Yeah. So I'm asking you, please let us collaborate. We have expertise. We'll wait till you finish and, and discussing it, something and then let us contribute because we may have something of value that you're shutting us down and you won't hear it. And by hearing us and people did contribute in very positive ways. Mm -hmm. 
And I think it helped us move along. So that's all I'm asking for. I think it's going to be hard to hear her. I'm going to fast forward a little bit here. Come forth with. Um, I know that um, there's a lot of talk about $200,000 not being enough money, but I attend almost every select board meeting, and I remember the select board stated that they would have no issues with going before FinCon to, to your committee, David, and, and addressing them because I don't think we should get into kneecapping ourselves at $200,000. I mean, we have one chance to do this and one chance to get it right. And, and I think that if, if, I mean, proactively. Well, you know why they're doing it. You know why they're doing it that way. They want to hide it. They don't want people to hear what they're saying. Uh, you know, this should be mic'd up better. Unfortunately, if you're not right on that, it's uh, a direct mic, so if you're not right on it, it's not going to pick up uh, what you're saying, what you're doing. Uh, let's go ahead to the most current select board meeting. There was some comments the other night that people were concerned about, talking about. We'll pick up some of those public comments, and then we're going to end uh, here in just a little bit. So, all right. The one Washington Street. What well, a select board email alias oh God, the audio uh, is so bad make sure that the uh letters are addressed uh care of the moderator there's literally like no audio on here next mr albert next meeting so the next the select board meeting will be held on tuesday june 11th 2024 7 p.m in the sala meeting room memorial hall eight in 15 minutes i can't what hear that anything does is that that? yeah it's a good idea anybody what else is going on, on? Right. Well, I'd like to ask a question see. before you vote, if you vote. No, it's not a vote. It's not a vote. No. Okay. We're, we're just going to try. <laughs> okay. And if I could just say something on the public comments, as long as you're talking about public comments, before public comments start. Um, you know, this town, there's a lot going on in this town, and I appreciate that you surveyed other towns, but we are in a different situation. And, you know, we have been asking for more than 15 minutes. And what that does is it puts tremendous pressure on the whole community when everybody only has 15 minutes to speak and other people want to speak. So I'm asking you, if you're going to put it wherever you put it, to extend the public comments. I would like to commend Bob McCarthy for doing something at the recent police audit meeting. And he at least went to 20 minutes and allowed people to speak freely. I'm asking you to take the chains off us. Don't put that silly timer on. And let's talk and let people talk as people, the way they normally would talk without having to read. So I'm asking you to reach into your heart and have a little compassion for the community and give us at least 25 minutes for public comments and don't time us and let us speak. When Bob McCarthy did that, we were able to collaborate and work together. When our hands are tied and we have a silly timer on, it causes unnecessary stress to the community. So that's all I would like to say. Okay, thank you. I'd go longer, I don't care. I mean, we're here, what the heck, why not? I, uh, I have no preference for it. The audio is awful in this, so I don't think we're gonna be able to play through this, unfortunately, because um, I'm not gonna sit here and go, huh? Um, I did plan to play this, but I don't know what's going on right now. Uh, let me just try doing this. Let me see. Let me try to restart this and see if this improves it. Yeah, the audio is terrible in this. All right, we're just going to bounce. This is fine. But again, uh, it's very, very important. Let's make sure. You know, write, write the community. I'm going to put that email address up again. This is very important about Chief Rafferty. Very, very important. And I'm going to put that up to end the show. Again, urgent request, Rita Lombardi. This is today. Chief Rafferty's contract expires on June 30th, 2024. The select board has until tomorrow, 
Friday, May 31st, to provide the chief with a required 30-day notice of non-renewal. The select board needs to hear from you on this very important leadership decision for Canton. Uh, while it impacts Canton residents directly, you do not need to be from Canton to share your perspective on this very important matter. You can help us now by sending an email at boston at town.canton.mass.us. It's very important. So thank you for your advance and your continued support. So show your disdain. Write your emails. Let them know how you feel. Uh, this is super important. Super, super important. Okay, uh, what do we have for a total for tonight that came in? Does anybody have the total? Yeah, we all need to write emails. I agree. What was the total? The donations that came in tonight? 555. 555 total. 25% will get kicked back to Karen Reed. It's at 138. I'm going to kick back 140. I'll kick back 140. I will post receipts up on my YouTube community page and on the LTL Media Facebook page. And then the ultimate vetting is you can go right to the defense page and you will see LTL Media Chat Razor and it will have the date, 5-30-24, and I will make the donation of $140. $140. I want to thank every single person tonight that came on and watched uh, our show live here tonight. We had a great uh, two, two guests in the beginning, Melanie Little and Jess Machado. If you're not following either one of them on their socials, you need to. Uh, you can look up attorney Melanie Little on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to her. And then Jess Machado is a uh, Fall River reporter. You can follow her on Twitter as well. Um, and she's very active. She's in the court. And I'll try to get them back here in a couple of weeks and try to do this again. Um, and, I, and listen, if you're the first uh, first time over here, please make sure to subscribe. Leave a comment after this, uh, this video post. And make sure to hit smash that like button. I would appreciate it. So this is my take. This is what I do here on this channel. Uh, I hope you found the content to be valuable tonight. And, um, you know, we'll be back soon. We'll do more of this. And uh, thank you. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, everybody that contributed, uh, sent super chats, cash apps, Vemos, PayPals. I do appreciate it. And we'll do that 25% kickback tonight. So make sure to subscribe. Uh, I got some things in the works. I'm trying to work out some other guests to have on the show. Hopefully that will work out soon, but it's just a timing thing. And we'll continue to watch the trial. Oh, by this week, by the way, on Thursday this week, uh, I'm gonna possibly be over on Melanie Little's channel doing uh, the trial watch through with her on that Thursday session. So I'll keep everybody up to date, but look out. I'll have some content over the weekend, I promise you. And uh, we will talk soon. Thank you all. I appreciate you. I'm gonna head out. Have a great night. And talk to everybody soon. Bye. Take the change and stand in